All right, welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about pre-response questions for AP Calculus that deal with parametric equations. Before I tell you anything you don't already know, I want to call back to something that we used extensively in the first semester of this class. And that's that f of b equals f of a plus the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx, the restatement of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're going to use this to recover positions given a velocity equation or equations and an initial position. So we're just going to apply the same idea. We're going to say that, well, we could say that x of 1 is equal to x of 0, which they gave us plus the integral from 0 to 1 of x prime of t dt. Okay, but we know that x of 0 is equal to 2 from right here. And we know that x prime of t dt, that's dx dt, that's going to be the square root of t plus 1. So I'm going to write that, oh no, as t plus 1 to the 1 half power. And then I'm going to actually do this integration. And I'll do this one for you, and then I'm going to have you do the other one to get the y-coordinate of the position. So 2 plus, find an antiderivative. Check your antiderivative real quick. Yeah, that's going to work. And then I'm going to plug in top and bottom and subtract. So that's going to be 2 plus 2 thirds of 2 to the 3 halves minus two-thirds of one to the three-halves, which is just going to be one. Okay, so that's how we would find x of one. That is a number that is equivalent to the position of the object at x equals one. Now, I want you to try the same thing for y of one using the exact same setup. We're going to say that y of one equals y of zero plus the integral from zero to one of y prime of t dt. Okay, so now you should pause it, work it on your own, and then check your work against mine. All right, there you go. So I set it up, plugged in all the given information, anti-differentiated, checked my antiderivative, plugged in 1, plugged in 0, and subtracted. Okay, now it'd be good to stop at the second to last line in blue if this was a free response scenario. But as I always say, I need you to know that the log of 1 is 0 for, you know, all sorts of multiple choice situations. All right, now let me tell you something you don't already know. So if we're talking about a two-dimensional vector and we want to find the length of the vector or really the absolute value of the vector, we're going to find that using the Pythagorean theorem. So, you know, suppose we've got this vector a, b. And maybe a is here and b is there. Okay. That vector, you know, for our purposes, we can just assume all vectors start at the origin and point out to the point a, b, right? And, but we could turn this also into a right triangle that had the side lengths a and b and the hypotenuse length of w. Okay. And we know that a squared plus b squared equals length of w squared from the Pythagorean theorem. And that's where we get that formula for the length of w. So now we know how to take the absolute value of a vector. And in AP calculus, we don't need just a whole lot of vector arithmetic and vector geometry properties. And there's so much stuff that we need to know that I'm not going to just pile on stuff that you don't need to know for the course. But, you know, we might be interested in taking the absolute value of the velocity vector because that gives us speed. And we've already seen that in this course. We saw last semester when we just presumed that velocity and acceleration were numbers and an object was moving along a straight line, that the absolute value of velocity was speed. So let's do that for the vector case. So I'll tell you that if we've got a velocity vector that's given by x prime of t and y prime of t, where x and y are the x and y positions of the object at time t, then its speed will be the length of the velocity vector, which is going to be the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. And you might recognize that expression. We, saw it, we worked with it a little bit last time. But maybe we'll just, you know, come back to that in a second. And I want you to think about last semester when we were given a formula for the velocity of an object moving on a straight line. How did we find the total distance traveled? If you think back, if you can remember, we found that total distance by integrating the absolute value of velocity, by integrating speed. So we can use that same idea with the vector velocity case to figure out a formula for 
the total distance traveled by an object moving along a parametrically defined curve. And so we can say, right, we're integrating the absolute value of velocity, and we just define the absolute value of velocity, or the speed, in terms of t. It's the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. And we're going to integrate that with respect to t between two time values. But we did this last time, right? We've seen this integral before. This is the same as the arc length integral. But if you think about it, if you've got, you know, some kind of like uh, animal moving along a curve in the plane, oops, went a little off my shot there, but, you know, say it was going along this curve, from this point to that point along that path, well, the total distance traveled would be the same as the arc length, right? And so that shouldn't be a big surprise to us. So let's just go forward and let's use these. All right, now the first example I've got for you is based on 2015 BC number two. And also, I am remembering from when I delivered this lesson in class that this is not going to be able to be three-fifths. We're going to need to change that to 1.01. .01. I think, I, I don't know what I was thinking when I made these the, these notes. I think I just miscopied the problem. I, I really, I wasn't trying to like be tricky and change the problem or anything. It's not the least question. But yeah, since it was cosine of t cubed and e to the negative 0.5t, I need to change that to 1.01. .01. And then everything else will work. So we're going to find the x coordinate in the object's position at t equals 5. And we're going to find that using the same technique that we did at the beginning. We're going to say that x of 5 is equal to x of 2 plus the integral from 2 to 5 of x prime of t dt. And this is definitely a calculator allowed one because you see this is uh, BC number 2. And the first two questions on the previous response allow the use of calculator. So x of 2 was equal to 3, and I'm going to have to use a calculator for this. All right, so we bring in the calculator, and we're going to say 3 plus the integral, math 9, from 2 up to 5 of cosine of t cubed. But I might recommend plugging cosine of t cubed and either the negative 0.5t into y1 and y2. Okay, we have those, and uh, whoops, pardon me. Um, we'll use that later, but not yet. Okay, if I've got those in there, because I'm going to need to use them repeatedly, that could save me a little time, right? I could call on y1, that was dx dt, cosine of x cubed. And we're going to integrate with respect to time, and we're going to get 2.909 or 2.9. Okay, for t between 0 and 1, there's one time where the slope's the slope of the object's path is 1.01. .01. Find the time. Okay. Well, okay, they say slope. We want to think dy dx. But we can't just say, hey, dy dx equals 1.01, .01, t equals this, right? You have to have an expression for the dy dx, right? Because nobody defined it. So we're just going to say that I want dy dx, which is going to be y prime over x prime, where this is y prime and that's x prime. So I'm going to say e to the negative 0.5t divided by cosine of t cubed. And we're going to say that equals 1.01. 1 .01. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the calculator, and I'm going to type in y3 so that I can it can help me solve this equation. I want, I might even put in a fraction bar, right? I want y2 divided by y1. That's dy dx. Okay. And then if I want to find where it equals 1.01, .01, I could go over here to y4 and type in 1.01, .01, or I could just subtract 1.01, .01, go to the window, make sure I set it to t between 0 and 1. You can see I've delivered this lesson recently to live kids. And then we're going to graph this. And we're going to say, oh, okay, there it happened, right at the very end. So we're going to calculate the zero. It's, yeah, 0.5 is to the left of the zero. One would be to the right of the zero. And then we get 0 0.971. Okay. So we're reporting the equation that we're solving and the solution. 0 0.971. Okay. When is the speed of the object equal to 1.3? Well, okay, that's the thing that's kind of new to us. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to write the expression for the speed. That would be cosine of t cubed 
squared plus e to the negative 0.5t squared. And we're interested in that equaling 1.3. Okay, and we're going to solve that equation. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to probably just clear this out and say, all right, the square root of y1 squared plus y squared. I want that to equal 1.3, so I'm going to subtract 1.3 and see where it equals 0. Okay, and there it happened right there. Okay, so we're going to calculate the 0. Looks like it's between 0 and a half. You know, if you weren't sure, you could put 0.6, and that's definitely to the right of it. And then I get 0 0.367 or 0 0.368. And I didn't mention, but you can see off to the side where they were awarding points for different things that you achieved throughout the problem, right? So one point on this one was for writing the expression for the speed in terms of t, that square root, and one is for the answer, okay? And then, lastly, we're going to find the total distance traveled by the object between t equals 0 and t equals 2. We're just going to run the integral of speed. Okay, so cosine, you can write cosine squared t cubed, you just can't type it in the calculator, plus, and if you know that that square is e to the negative t, then good for you. But if you're not sure, you're best off, whoops, just squaring it like that, because what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust y3 and then just integrate on y3. We're going to get rid of that 1.3, that negative 1.3. And then now this thing here is my integrand right there. So I'm going to get out of there and integrate from 0 up to 2 on y3. And I get 2.000. And that was, that's all for that example. All right, the second free response example I've got for you is based on 2011, BC number one. So this one also allows the use of the calculator, but there's not really much going on here that's different besides part A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work part A for you, and then I'm going to have you pause the video and try to work parts B, C, check your work against mine. Okay, so let's start in on A. Find the speed of the particle at t equals one. We can do that. Because we know that the speed of the particle at t equals 1 is going to be the square root of x prime of 1. And we can't say x prime of 1 squared because they define dx dt, and, and we accept that those mean the same thing, plus y prime of 1 squared. And I'm going to use the calculator for that. Wait a second. No, I'm not. I don't need the calculator for this, right? I can just plug in t equals 1. So that would be the square root of 4 times 1 minus 1 is 3. i got to square that to get 9. And then I'll take, well, dy dt at t equals 1 would be the square root of 3 over e. So if I squared that, I would get 9 over e to the 2. No, I would not. I would get 3 over e to the 2 because so it's the square root of 3. Okay? And that's a perfectly fine answer for us, right? For the acceleration vector, we're going to need to take a derivative, and that's what I'm going to need to use a calculator for. So I'm going to say that a of 1 is equal to x double prime of 1 and y double prime of 1. Okay, x double prime of 1, I mean, I can take the derivative of this myself, right? I can say that's 4. But y prime, or y double prime of 1, I'm going to have to take the derivative of that fraction with respect to time, and, well, that might be the type of thing that we want to use calculator for. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to use math 8 to take the derivative of. And, you know, maybe you're going to do the rest of these problems, so you've already installed dy dt into y2. And you could use y2 in that case, but I'm, I'm not. So we're going to numerator denominator, square root of t plus 2, divided by e to the t at the point where t equals 1. Yeah. And you get negative 0.531. So this vector, we already determined that x double prime was going to be 4. And y double prime was negative 0 0.531. Okay. Yeah, that looks good to me. All right, now you try parts b, c, and d on your own. Okay, you're going to pause the video because in like 10 seconds, the answer for all three of them is going to pop right up.
All right, there you go. So I recovered the X and Y positions at time T equals one using the same technique we've been using throughout this video. F of B is F of A plus the integral from A to B of F prime, right? And for part C, we just plugged in T equals one into dy dx. So we needed the Y derivative at T equals one divided by the X derivative at T equals one, which was dx dt and dy, or dy dt and dx dt. And I got 0 0.212. And then we ran that total distance integral, that arc length integral through the calculator and got 27.025. And I know you can do all of those things. But before I let you go, there's a couple of other things I wanted to show you that could potentially happen. Okay, first would be the average speed. That's something we haven't talked about. Okay, and in general in this class, when you see the average of something, I want you to think of average value. I'm going to integrate it and divide by the width of the interval that they want. Okay. So that's what we could do. Say 1 over 2 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 2 of speed, which would be the square root of cosine squared t cubed minus, no, plus, I think minus, e to the negative 0.5t squared with respect to t. Okay. But when we were working this example earlier, that integral, that represented the total distance, right? But we also know from, I don't know, some science class along the way, that, av that average speed equals total distance over total time, right? So this wouldn't be surprising. We knew this came back 2.000. So I'm going to think that this one comes back 1.000. And it wasn't 2.000 because it was exactly 2. It was just like really close to 2 or something. And so this one would be really close to 1, I would assume. And the last thing I got for you in this video is a question that has not appeared yet on AP Calculus or CalBC, but I could really see it being asked. It's the speeding up or slowing down for a parametric equation scenario. Okay. Now, you remember last semester when we were asking about speeding up or slowing down, what this actually was asking is, is the speed increasing or decreasing? I'll just translate that. And, you know, maybe from a different class, a science class, a different math class, you might already know how to find this, you know, using a dot product, but that's not a part of AP Calculus. I'm going to show you a different way. You know, in the first semester also, we determined if a function was increasing or decreasing by taking its derivative and checking the sign. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say that I'm interested in taking the derivative with respect to time of speed. So I'll have that square root of cosine t cubed squared square there, plus e to the negative 0.5 t squared. Okay, I'm going to take the derivative of that and plug in t equals 1. And now, I mean, suppose we could do this by hand, but look at all those layers of chain. We don't want to do that. Let's see, do I still have it? Okay, I have one of them. No, I started to plug that in, and I realized I probably didn't need to. I could just use the one that was sitting next to me. So cosine of t cubed and e to the negative 0.5t. Okay, so that this thing is what I want it to be, because I want to take the derivative of y3 at the point where t equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to call for the derivative with math 8 take the derivative of y3, which is speed, at the point where t equals 1, and I get a negative number. So I'm going to report that, negative 1.906. And since that is less than 0, I'm going to say that the speed is decreasing, or the object is slowing down. And that's all I got to show you. At this point, you just need to do a bunch of parametric free response problems from recent years. Uh, you know, kind of see all the things there are to be seen from the recent ones. Uh, see all the tricks that they can pull out, but I'll just tell you right now there aren't that many. And all the different forms that this can take. And once you practice this a few times, I think you will feel good about, you know, maybe you'll hope that we get a parametric free response this year because they're pretty repetitive and therefore predictable. That's all I got for you. Thanks for watching.